Hello, my name is David Holden, naturopathic physician and nutritional biochemist. Today I want to talk about Hemoview live blood analysis. I originally trained as a microbiologist and biochemist for the National Health Institute here in New Zealand for five years as a scientist and I played around with microscopes a lot in my training. So I always had a keen interest in microscopy. When I discovered nutrition as a, a naturopathic physician trained both in New Zealand and Australia and uh, in the United States, I discovered the system, the unique system called Hemoview Live Blood Analysis and was quite intrigued by it. In New Zealand, there are actually three main systems of Hemoview Dark Field Microscopy that are used. The most common by far is the Metagenic system developed by an American research team and also perfected by the Australian branch of Metagenics in, in Queensland, Brisbane. I, however, did their training, one of the first, if not the first, in New Zealand to get trained in that system um, and uh, really enjoyed that system. But I also went to the States and did extra training with Michael Coyle in Sacramento, California, and Dr. Robert Bradford in San Diego. And their two systems, the, what I now call the Bradford Coyle method, is what I also use alongside the Metagenic system. So what I'm going to show you in the next few moments is the wet blood analysis, which is a la Metagenics, um, with modifications that I've done to improve, I think, the system. And then we will do the dry blood analysis, a la Bradford Coil. There's only, to my knowledge, three or four, possibly a maximum of five practitioners doing this system in New Zealand now. And it gives us a more complete picture. So similar to iridology, where you can photograph the irises, but thorough eye diagnosticians will also do the sclera, that's the red lines and the whites of the eyes, and they'll also examine the pupils and the pupillary border under high magnification to give a more complete system. So this is what I do with Hemiview Live Blood Analysis, and we're going to have a look starting with the wet blood analysis now. Okay, so now I'm going to take a patient's blood sample. So I've pre-prepped the slides. I'm about to swab the patient's finger to sterilize it from bacteria. Um, and then I will take the sample. A lot of people say, why don't you wear gloves while you're doing this? Well, I don't actually get very close to the blood at all, but I always disinfect my hands afterwards anyway. So just to make that point clear, because when we're trained, we're told to use gloves, but it's a bit cumbersome with the fine cover slip and the glass slides getting talcum powdered glove stains all over them. So here we go, we're going to do this patient's um, sample. So if I can use you, Gerald, for your hand. So we're going to swab the patient's hand like this. We're using meths without stain in it. Great, and if you can roll that finger back and that one back. So there's a special technique I'm using. Oops, sorry. There we go. So this is for the wet blood analysis so we gently keep it really still capture the specimen like so this is for the wet analysis and we've got a great nice slide there and the next one i allow meniscus of blood to form which is beautifully formed just rotate the hand like so and we're going to get four specimens one after the other And then we put that to dry, give the patient a tissue, and then we're going to look at the blood. Okay, so we're putting the sample on the machine. The dry blood is drying down here. And we just get a little bit of oil on the objective condenser. This is to make the resolution sharper because it's a research grade microscope, $20,000 microscope. And we're getting the picture nice and sharp. So we're just focusing on low power first just to get a decent picture. That's the blood on low power. And then we go into high power. Right, so if we have a look here, we can see on full screen, this is the patient's blood. Now there is a little bit of clumping going on here called rouleau. Rouleau is where the cells aren't completely separated. I'm just scanning through the blood. Yeah, there's some white blood cells here. 
So I'm going to snap a picture of this because the blood's a little bit clumped. So it shows that this person has been under a little bit of stress recently and they may be a bit dehydrated. There can be other reasons too. So if you see the program, very good program, technology from Metagenics enables me to save these images. So really that's almost like erythrocyte aggregation, but I'm going to call it Rouleau because it is closer to Rouleau and it's moderate. And I put some comments in here. So this shows um, moderate Rouleau, which needs better hydration and more omega-3s in the diet. Now we go back to the sample and I'm going to go through a process of snapping pictures so I can get really clear exactly what's going on in the blood. So here we've got a lot more rouleau and this is a bit more serious in this patient. So what this is revealing is that there is a number of inflammatory markers going on in this bloodstream and we need to work out what they are. Now this is a common thread for cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, a whole range of other things, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean the patient has those. This is a generic parameter. It could be as benign as eating a food that they react to the meal before, or having an argument with the wife, or racing to get to work, or whatever it is can trigger this sign in the blood. There's a quite a wide range of reasons. And the detective work and the skill of the practitioner is to find out what's causing this and to eliminate it. So I'll capture the image. This is a little bit, it's not as severe as many that we see in, in seriously ill patients. It's a sign of a generalized stress response, which would be right. So this is where the blood's getting a little bit more separated. It's quite a dense specimen because this this patient has a particularly rich blood, very well nourished actually. So what we've got here is two white cells. Now there's five different types of white cells. I'm just going to zoom in on them and blow them up so you can see them a bit more clearly. They look like alien invaders in the blood. Um, and they're not, they're part of your immune system. So these are neutrophils. Their main job is to destroy bacteria in the blood. It's normal to have them. They're the most ubiquitous or common cell in the blood. But it's unusual to have two in one screen. So it shows there's a mild immune challenge going on. So I'm just going to capture these. So to give you an idea of how strong the magnification is, one of these red blood cells here, you can fit about 1,000 to 1,200 of those end to end on the head of a pin. So they're about 8 to 10 microns across in diameter. So it, you can see it's um, a fairly sophisticated microscope giving us a lot of detail, which is exactly what we want. So coming down here, we're looking at this is showing neutrophils are elevated. I'll put here raised WBCs um, due to mild infective agent or could be a food reactor or other stressor. And we've got ways of figuring these things out from questionnaires and all sorts of other tests that I do, but this gives us the indication it's there. So this is getting a bit closer to normal. We would like to have these red cells more separated, um, but this basically, we can start to see the shape of these cells. Now, if we had lots of these ones, I'll blow the, the brightness right up so you can see if I zoom this up now this is a false annulocyte sign because I know this patient well and they're not iron deficient however if we had lots and throughout the specimen if we had lots of these then that's a sign that the patient is iron deficient and so we would give them a liquid source of iron because they're rapidly absorbed in a bad case in a mild case like this um, maybe uh, some steak or red meat or spirulina if they were a vegetarian. More in the diet would re rectify the problem fairly quickly. And that's called annulocytosis, and it's very mild. So moving on, 
Have a look around the blood. So now here we go, we can see another couple of types of blood cells. Now this is where it gets a bit more interesting. As I said before, there are five types of white blood cells. We can see two types in this screen here, um, and I'll show you them. So this one here, which is very faint, is a lymphocyte. Lymphocytes are like vacuum cleaners for viruses. Their job is to go around the blood sucking up dead viruses, or live ones for that matter. These ones here are the neutrophils we mentioned before, slightly distorted. So it is possible that the patient has had contact with a virus, a very mild one. The immune system's throwing it off. It's no big deal. If the patient had an active, aggressive virus, there would be dozens of these, even in one or two screens, and they would be pitted with white dots. And there's various other diagnostics we can use by visualizing and having a look at them very close up. So it's a great technology, gives us, takes all the guesswork out, we can see precisely what's going on. So let's pick out something else that's more interesting here. Okay, now here's an interesting one. If you look here, that's a healthy lymphocyte. This one is an unhealthy lymphocyte. It's actually a combination of um, platelet aggregations by the looks of it. Let's have a closer look. Because some of these signs look incredibly similar, and it's the skill of the operator, and they're, no, it's definitely a lymphocyte. So this one here is an is a infected lymphocyte with viruses. The fact that this one close to it isn't means this is historical, because these have a lifespan of about 60 days, 55, 60 days. So this will most likely be an older one, and it looks older, it's not as well formed. This is a much fresher one that's come out of the bone marrow, probably the last, I'm guessing, 10, 15, 20 days, and it hasn't picked up any viruses, whereas this one's been cruising around the blood for probably 50 days plus, and it's picked up quite a few. So this would indicate to me that the patient has been experiencing a virus in the past, and that's true, they have. I know this patient well. They did were throwing off a bug from a family member quite successfully with some naturopathic treatments. And here's the proof, the new cells showing clear. No problem. So they throw off the virus quite nicely. That's getting closer to normal, where the cells are starting to separate. These are the red blood cells. Again, you can see there's these annulocytes. So this particular patient is a bit low in iron and so needs to dose up on it. So I'm going to capture those again. And there's a couple of other signs. If you look carefully where I'm pointing the arrow, you can see some of these cells are a little bit misshapen. Not a lot, but a few. So that indicates that the patient is a bit low in B vitamins, not hugely. So they would benefit from um, a higher dose of B vitamins in their diet or supplementation. Now, here we go. Here's an interesting sign. This, this is what it's all about. Often when you think you've seen it all, you suddenly pick up something else. You'll notice here this crisscross fibrous pattern. This is known as fibrin. Now this particular patient's just started a detox in the last five days, and they're doing some liver repair work because of damage to the liver from chemicals that they were exposed to. And that sign there is a sign that the liver does need help and it is detoxifying. So it's a very good sign. And it's known as fibrin and it's a cluster and it's of the mild um, parameter. So very useful. If we just had lots of these without the person doing a detox, I'd want to support the liver. The liver is a unique organ. You can remove surgically a third of it, and it's the only organ other than the skin that will completely regrow. So it's a pretty amazing organ. Ah, now here's another area. Now, this is technically not in the readable zone, but I'll show you what these look like because they're a common feature. You can see these distorted cell shapes. Now, because this isn't in the readable zone, I'm not going to um, be too concerned about them. However, I'm going to point them out for the purposes of the video. So if we found these cells in an area of normal blood, then this would tell me the patient is a bit of antioxidant and vitamin C depleted. Okay. Now, I happen to know this patient took vitamin C this morning, and this isn't in the readable zone. But if it was, then um, we'll mark this. It's a little bit of mild echinocytosis. So what's happening is the patient's doing a detox. Chemicals are coming out of the stored fat in the body, the liver, the spleen particularly, and possibly the kidneys. And so the body needs to up its level of antioxidants to protect 
healthy cells from those toxins as they're drawn out. Now, here's another sign, this elliptoid pencil cell. If we had lots of those, the patient would be deficient in folic acid, particularly relevant for mums wanting to get pregnant again or, or in pregnancy. If we see lots of those signs, then we want to be giving the patient a lot more folic acid. Most women, with all the publicity um, happening in pharmacy now, to so the Ministry of Health are very aware they need to take folic acid before they conceive, but um, because it can lead to neural tube defects and uh, all sorts of other problems. Another thing that pregnant women need to be having is a lot more iodine. Iodine can lead to cretinism if it's deficient, and there's no really accurate blood test for that. Um, there is a serum iodine, but most doctors don't do it. Naturopaths, the better ones, do do it. Um, like myself, it's a very important one. There are two other tests at this point that I do. The next one I do is part of the Bradford Coil system. This is not normally done by Hemaview. Um, heme of you technologists. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to destroy the specimen deliberately because I've had a good look at it. So I'm going to come over here. So I'm breaking up the specimen, destroying the red cells and white cells because I want to have a look at the debris field that's left behind because many parasites can hide in the debris field. And now we can see them uncloaked, so to speak, or unmasked. So I would normally expect to see something that looks like looking at moving in a space. Okay, and here we have the first sign that's abnormal. Now it's not major, it's just a bit of fibrin. If we had a crisscross lattice network of this spindly type formation, then it would mean there's liver damage, but this patient doesn't have that, which is great. This small amount of fibrin is a detox reaction because the patient's undergoing a detox. So not concerned about this. It just proves the point that the detox is working. Everything else in this blood is pretty normal. You would normally see a few uh, white dots not moving. That's cellular debris and toxins from normal metabolism. And then there's a snow that's sort of moving through the blood. Those are normal fat cells from, um, in this case, the patient. We make a note of what they ate. They had organic gluten-free muesli, rice milk, and supplements. Um, and there was a little bit of fat with, I think, some acidophilus yogurt in the, uh, in the person's breakfast as well. So these little fat cells we're seeing. Not bad. Good fats. You need good fats. It's very important for, for brain function and uh, nervous system function. So a very normal looking screen there. Not too concerned about it. Again, this is the detox reaction. Now, when you get lots of these... These are a sign that there's macrotoxins coming out of the system. Again, the patient's doing a detox. We expect to see these. If they weren't doing a detox and we saw lots of these, then I'd be a bit more concerned because that indicates then, particularly this one, I'll arrow it, that there's a lot more macrotoxins to come out and they need to initiate a detox. Okay, but this person's already doing well. Well, 